Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright at Air, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with bilateral fully occluding earwax and dead skin. In fact, they may have um, keratosis obturans in their right ear, which is far more complex than this, their left ear. So stay tuned for the right ear. However, in their left ear, you'll see the image in the thumbnail. We have, we've removed a large um, plug of dead skin. And we know it's dead skin by the texture and the appearance of the surface of the plug. You can actually see the sheets of dead skin as a, a rippled um, appearance there, a ribbed appearance, and that's dead skin. So skin that once lined the ear canal is, uh, it reproduces itself, so it replicates itself, and um, that replication layer of skin forces the original skin further away from the surface of the ear canal and eventually that dead skin layer um, it doesn't receive any more blood or nutrients from the perichondrium or the periosteum which is the uh, the kind of separating layer between cartilage and the skin and the outer third of the ear canal and the bony part of the ear and the skin and the inner two-thirds part of the of the ear canal so once that outer most outer layer of skin is starved from uh, the blood supply and the oxygen and nutrients it re requires to to stay alive the skin dies and it's shed so that's that huge plug and you'll see at the end a still image of the plug and um, you'll see in in great detail the, the the sheets of dead skin so once the uh, the skin dies and sheds it should naturally migrate out of the ear in a conveyor belt motion and it takes around 10 months for skin that was originally on the eardrum because the outermost layer of the eardrum, the lateral layer, is made of the same skin that lines the inner two-thirds of the ear canal, the bony part. It's, it's, it's a layer of epithelial skin cells which forms the epidermis, the outer layer of skin. So it takes around 10 months, give or take. Everyone's a bit different, of course, for it to migrate. So you can see the eardrum at a distance. looks nice and healthy. They've got a bumpy floor of the ear canal you may have seen there's a bit of a divot there and um, potentially that could be uh, part of the reason why the patient's getting a buildup of dead skin and wax because the skin's not able to fully migrate because of that bump that interference in the row if you like i'm just using the fine end here i'm just peeling the skin off the the roof of the ear canal the and, and the anterior section and so this skin, if I didn't remove it, it, it would have eventually formed part of that plug of dead skin that I removed. So you can see that little bump on the road just there at the bottom of the ear canal. So this is the right ear. So this is a, a lot more complex. Um, and they also had a lot more hairs at the entrance of the ear canal. So on both sides have a lot of cilia at the entrance. These hairs should only be on the outer third of the ear canal, the cartilaginous portion. And they help to filtrate the air. So it prevents or it helps to prevent dust, uh, pollen, for example, foreign particles from entering the ear and then colonizing within the ear canal. And this, the, the hairs at the root, you also have attached to sebaceous glands, which secrete an, uh, an oily, fatty substance called sebum, which contains organic compounds such as alcohol, squalenes, cholesterols long chains of saturated and unsaturated fatty acids and sebum is slightly acidic so the acidity helps to repel insects believe it or not and it also helps to inhibit certain bacterial and fungal growth and the oil um, the substance also helps to moisturize the skin so it prevents the skin from drying and cracking so it's multifunctional um, I think I'm going to use a Jobson horn. I, it, I just felt a lot of resistance initially with the suction probe, so I've just gone in with the Jobson horn. The, the, the plug of wax and skin is probably a bit too soft for a hook. The hook will just dissect through it. Whereas with the Jobson horn, you've got a larger surface area. So I'm trying to almost shovel it out I'm using it like a spade. And I've got a little bit there. And you can see it's separated as I was removing it. So I've just gone back in with the suction probe to remove that. Now I'm... Um, I've removed probably the outer centimetres worth of earwax. I can go in a bit further with the endoscope now. And you can see that consistency. It's almost like butter, this section, the mid, the mid section. And the innermost layer of the wax and dead skin 
is a bit firmer and it's attached to the eardrum. Now, the reason why I think the patient may have um, early stages of keratosis obturans here is because they do have a bit of granulation tissue at the roof of the ear canal. Uh, and you'll see that uh, appear. It's, it's, it's hidden behind this wax plug and skin plug. And also there's a high content of dead skin. You can see that dead skin, the, the outermost layer. What I was doing there, the suction probe just got blocked, so I'm just giving it a good shake to unblock it. So you can see there's quite a few hairs here. Now, there is a bit of a widening of the ear canal, which is sometimes a sign of keratosis obturans. So keratosis obturans is when the dead skin that I described earlier, it fails to fully migrate and it forms into a plug. Typically, this plug is located deeper in the ear, uh, in, the, in the inner two thirds, the bony part of the ear canal. And I would actually say, more so in the inner third, so right up against the eardrum, although it can get bigger and then affect the midsection of the ear canal. And this plug of dead skin, dead skin sheets, um, it fails to migrate and it falls upon itself, forms a plug, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So as the next layer of skin that's lining the ear canal dies, it, it again doesn't shed, it doesn't migrate, and it attaches itself to that plug and then so, so on and so forth. And this plug of dead skin, um, can get so big and has so much force and pressure that it can start to widen and change the shape of the ear canal. Um, one of the hallmarks of keratosis obturans is ear pain, and they did have a bit of pain in this side. And that pain is just because of how much pressure the plug is forcing up against the canal wall. So much so, as I said, it can change the shape, begin to change the shape of it. So a grade one keratosis obturans is when patient attends with a bit of earache um, but there's no, not necessarily any evidence of the widening of the ear canal. Grade two again they attend with mild pain and there is visible widening of the ear canal. Uh, grade three is when there's moderate pain and um, moderate expansion of the ear canal but also with a grade three you do get some granulation tissue and the reason for that is when this plugs really it's going to come in view just here at the top can you see that so that's granulation tissue and that's created by the skin plug applying so much force against the ear canal wall that it's causing trauma and in response granulation tissue is are sometimes called inflammatory cells and so as part of the healing process your body produces granulation tissue inflammation cells and it's a build of a connected tissue and it has this bumpy red surface, as you can see, and this granulation tissue can then have its own blood supply. Um, and that's a hallmark of grade three, yeah, keratosis obturans. Uh, a grade four is the most extreme form, and that's when there's so much widening that the ear canal forms and merges with the mastoid bone, which is the bone behind your ear. And they typically need surgical intervention. You can see, see that little piece of granulation tissue now if you keep watching till the end i was trying to avoid suctioning that um but sometimes the granulation tissue gets attracted by the suction at the end um that granulation tissue it get it pops <laughs> um one for a better word and it does bleed a little bit but it's fine it'll it, it's the bleeding stemmed and it, again that that's just its own blood supply and blood vessels uh, being ruptured so this is the more medial impaction, and it's right up against the eardrum. And as I'm lifting it, you may see the eardrum at the bottom about four or five o'clock. It's slightly a blue tinge. I'm just trying to separate it off the posterior canal wall. So as you can see in this ear, uh, there's considerably more wax. It's more of a severe impaction, but the left side, the plug came out in one large piece. So again, you can begin to see the eardrum. And this section of the ear canal, I don't know if you can notice, it is wider than the rest. And obviously abnormally wider. So this is a sh sure sign of keratosis obturans. Now, with keratosis obturans, you do get different textures and consistencies of the skin. You get it like this sometimes where it's a bit soft and smudgy. Sometimes it's really hard and crusty and sometimes um, it's very elastic. So this is more of a softer consistency. Now, uh, can you see there the eardrum is flexing in response to the suction probe, especially posteriorly. 
So they have got quite a thin eardrum. We've got to be careful here. Um, it's never happened to myself, touch wood, but I know a colleague of mine, a very esteemed colleague, say, um, is an ENT surgeon. And uh, this just goes to show you things can always happen. There's always risks attached. But they performed suction once, and they weren't anywhere near the eardrum, but the eardrum itself had a very uh, thin section through previous um, trauma. And although the sucker was about halfway in, it actually ruptured the eardrum. The eardrum got sucked in towards it. Now, all is fine in the end. Um, it healed, so it, it, was no, it was no concern per se. But I, here I'm just using the fine end suction probe. Although this wax is really, really impacting, I do, the extra power would be useful, but it's just too risky using the full zone suction probe here. Now, there's a little bit left at the bottom, not too concerned by that. And again, now this is off the eardrum. This is more on the anterior kind of wall. And the fine end made a big difference. Um, it allows me, it provides more precision as well when we work deeper in the ear. And if you do come in contact with the eardrum or the bony part of the ear canal, um, it's less likely to cause trauma compared to a standard zonal suction probe. So on my way out there, the granulation tissue you can see it got attracted by the suction it ruptured itself so I'm just going to mop this up the patient's going to use some acetic acid um, ear spray I think that's just connective tissue with its own blood supply so this almost looks fleshy in appearance Penis and adjacent skin. So already it's almost stem bleeding. And that's the plug in the patient's left in. You can see that ribbed ripple effect texture surface that I was referring to earlier. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.